We have one week to finish a Boards Earth terrain. Let's go! Now, we are old pros at 40k, but that's the problem. We're old pros. Neither of us has played a single game of 9th edition, so we have to familiarize ourselves with any terrain rules changes for Warhammer 40k 9th edition. It turns out the size of a 40k board has changed. Kinda dramatically. Back in the good old days, it was an obnoxiously big 4 foot by 6 foot board, but now it scales with the game size. Small games are played on 44 by 30, about the size of a small dining table, 44 by 60, the size of a large dining table, and an incredible 44 by 90, which is the size of the table you probably ate your school lunches on. We're gonna stick with the old size. It's what we have gaming mats for, and it should give us more than enough terrain to play any size game of 9th edition. Oh yeah, that's a pretty big f***ing monitor. Welcome to the Chad Station. Through the power of technology, I can plan everything out beforehand, which is important, as we are incredibly busy tubers, and every second of free time is precious. By using the computer, I can map out exactly what I want and where I want it. Our terrain right now is kind of lacking. We have a hodgepodge of stuff that we picked up over the years or made ourselves, but it's inconsistent, half-finished, and far too often unpainted. It gets the job done, sure, but we can do better, we should do better, and we will do better. This is what I'm thinking. Big rectangles in the middle, smaller rectangles around that, and little cubes in between those. This is what it will look like very basically. So it's time to get to work. All I have to do is... invent everything. Terrain is the other half of the hobby. You have tons of beautiful models, but if you're just pushing them around whatever's laying around your house, you're missing out. This game isn't just about rolling dice and seeing who wins. It's about storytelling. It's practically an RPG, but instead of assuming command of one character, you are assuming command of an entire faction. A group of warriors handpicked by you who are preparing to do battle. And having a real fake battlefield will make all the difference. It's a lot like video games. Running around a 3D environment gets you in the mindset to be immersed in a game. But video games do that for us. For tabletop, we have to do it ourselves. And this is gonna be the first piece of terrain. This is a big imperial tower, definitely not compensating for anything. I saw it in this old Games Workshop book, How to Make War Game Terrain. It's got real big tower energy, if you know what I mean. It will provide good cover for models to hide behind. Big stuff is important to help smaller units not get blasted off the board too fast. And when you think of terrain, it's always big stuff like this. So to start out all these models, first I gave them a thick coat of some filler primer, then I gave them a light dusting of some texture paint. Then I gave them a base coat of black spray paints. And finally, a zenith -y sort of thing of some gray spray paints. And to save you guys watching me spend hours shaking paint cans, I will demonstrate right now. I poured white into my airbrush and spilling it all over myself. This is why I didn't use a white rattle can. Spray paint can only do so much. I want to apply some highlights and I need the precision of an airbrush. I sprayed lines of white onto the top parts of the building creating a gradient. Now I have black, gray, and white all on the model. It's all about that value. So I want to paint it light blue, but I don't just want to spray it with an opaque paint, so I'm going to mix it with some medium. You could do this with just water, but I like it to be a little thicker, so I'm going to be using a medium or you could also use a blending compound. I gave this a gurgle and now this super thin blue mixture is ready for spraying. It went on beautifully, tinting everything perfectly. So it's blue, and because of how light that layer of blue was, I was able to take advantage of the black and the gray and the white I sprayed on underneath. So it's already got plenty of value, but now it's time to take it to the next step. And because this is gonna be a crazy, crazy week, I mean, usually I paint a couple of models a week, now I'm painting dozens of huge pieces of terrain. So I literally don't have time to mix paint and put it in the airbrush. So I'm gonna be making extensive use of inks because inks I can just dump into my airbrush and they'll spray beautifully. First up, indigo. I'm gonna use this to force in some shadows. I sprayed this to give a subtle dark outline to features, like these supports in the door. Next up, burnt umber. This color I'm using to help blend the bottom of my buildings into the earthy board it'll sit on. After that, a yellow. 
This might seem like a weird one, but I don't want a perfectly clean sky blue building. Spraying this will give it a mottled green blue appearance. A little bit of dirtiness. So now the model is basically done being painted. Thank goodness, if it took any more time than this, there's no chance I'd be able to get it all done this week. I mean, there's still like a 50-50, but it's looking good. And now there's just a few key things I wanna do to this to make it feel done. What? No, I'm not gonna make you a template. I have other stuff to do. You can figure it out. So my next step was to make a template for myself. I want hazard stripes, so I marked out a pattern and then carefully cut it out. Then I maxed up my buildings and primed the spots I wanted hazards with white. After that, I lined up my template and gave it a spray. So you might have noticed that it's not yellow. I sprayed it yellow using inks. The black was too dark for the yellow inks to cover it, so this worked to yellow it up. And then I added more color with orange ink. This is my favorite way to do hazards. Then for the best part of any project, demasking. It worked like a charm. A few last minute details, I painted the Aquila with silver paint using a paintbrush for the first time today. And again, I used orange ink to tint the silver gold. <sighs> the hazard striping took about as much time as it took to paint the entire model, but I think it was worth it. Now it has a really nice focal point. And the only thing left is just a little bit of weathering. I took a full size chip brush and began stippling on silver paint. I laid this on pretty thick. It'll do a good job of bringing it all together and make the building look lived in. And one done. That wasn't so bad. Maybe we can actually manage to finish this project after all. I made another building, two down, couple more to go, a lot more to go. This is the Imperial Firebase. It was, shall we say, inspired by the old 40k cardboard and plastic terrain. It was interesting to reimagine this paper and plastic model into real materials. I like it a lot, but mine won't be made of paper. Where the big dick tower is just a lump of line of sight blocking terrain, this model has a lot of services for models to interact with. They can enter it, climb on top of it, and hide behind it. This will turn our battlefields into a real King of the Hill situation. Well, maybe more like five-year-olds in a battle royale. Bob it? Should be cool. Can't wait to see what happens with it. Wow. I know that this is like the big centerpiece model and uh, it definitely looks it. Lots of parts. Okay, now that I have everything organized, it totally looks doable. When it was a big pile, I was a little bit afraid of it, but now that I have everything organized based on the instructions, this looks super easy. I've built Lincoln Logs before, and I know what I'm doing here. Damn, this is a big boy. It was not too bad to put together and Look at it, it's enormous. I gotta paint it. Boom! Just like that, the Imperial Firebase is finished. In like four quick steps and like five or six not so quick hours, it is complete. And it has some amazing board presence, it's huge. I cannot wait for all of the other beautiful pieces of terrain to surround this thing that I still have to paint. Oh boy, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a project. I was thrilled with my progress on the firebase, but that was mid-afternoon. I stayed up for most of the night, working until the sun came back up. I was furiously building stuff, painting stuff, getting things ready, and as the hours ticked away, my thoughts changed from the idea of finishing to just pushing through exhaustion. My only comfort was knowing that Nick was in the exact same boat. Misery loves company. This is never gonna work. At this point, each building is taking hours, and the bottleneck isn't coming up with the designs. It's making them actually 3D printable. Yes, you could let the machines print for days, but I don't have much of a printer farm. Time and materials are precious, which means I have to come up with ways to hollow the models and cut them into several smaller components. This will allow me to print with little to no supports, speeding up the printer time. Another thing to consider is switching printer types. With an FDM printer, the nozzle has to deposit plastic one line at a time, but a resin printer, like the Photon Mono 6K, has a large print area and allows for printing multiple parts all together. 
Using both printer types will help me save time. This is still taking way too long, though. There isn't a law that says all the terrain must be designed during this week. I am the law! And why not take advantage of my collection of finished terrain? I don't see why not. And speaking of take advantage, this terrain is available on our Patreon. Over there, we have tons of high-quality terrain STLs, and we are coming out with more monthly. Everything I made this week is on there, including all the terrain packs from the previous months. Dawn of War Space Marines, Dawn of War Imperial Guard, Dawn of War Eldar, Ancient Ruins, and this month's Dock Workers Terrain. All of this is available at our Ultra Fans tier and is the best way to support us making videos. And you get a lot of other stuff too. Another great way to support us is by checking out our merch. You can follow the link in the description below to our shirts and sweatshirts with some fun hobby related designs. Let's get back to it. Again, what I really need is time. I can stall for a little bit by creating some small duplicatable terrain. This stuff often goes unnoticed, but it really is what makes a board. Scatter terrain, accent terrain, incidental terrain, difficult ground, these are the little things that fill in the space between the real pieces of terrain. And the great thing is they can be duplicated indefinitely. Barrels and boxes are the perfect place to start if you want to get into 3D design. I'm working in Vectorworks and Blender, but barrels are simple. You could even make these up in Tinkercad. The building blocks of 3D modeling, just like drawing, is coming up with primitive shapes that the object is made of. This camera looks complex to model, but if you break it down into small, simple shapes, like rectangles and circles, it becomes a lot easier. We're going to copy this barrel. All it is, is a cylinder with smaller cylinders. I made a cylinder with a diameter of 16mm and 25mm tall, then duplicated it and changed the size to 17.65mm for the diameter and 1.85mm tall. Those would be the rings on the barrel. Then I aligned the cylinders and duplicated the rings, keeping the middle rings in from the top and bottom by 8mm. Then I grouped them together to combine all the objects. To add more detail, I made a short hole in the top of the barrel and added a cap. And there you go, baby's first barrel. After making that, you can play with the other primitives like the ring and tube which have more properties to control your model. It also might be fun to add these little rivets. It might be quick for you, it might take hours, but trying to create something is all that really matters. We have some Papa Bear Big Terrain, Mama Bear Medium Terrain, and so of course we needed some Baby Bear Little Terrain to make it feel just right. This stuff is my favorite to paint because it's the easiest to treat just like a normal mini when it comes to painting. I want to work fast, so I need to wrangle in all these small parts. If I was painting more leisurely, I would go one at a time. But for this, I'm going to use sub-assemblies. I stuck the three different types of scatter onto different paint handles with double stick tape. This way, 50 some odd little things become three big things, much easier to paint. And paint I did. I sprayed the palettes gray, then gave them a base coat with what else? Burnt umber ink. This gave them a nice uneven brown appearance. Then I put some tan into my airbrush and sprayed this in lines across the two halves of each palette to show that the flexing in the middle where there's no supports have been worn down. And to add even more wear and tear, I did a generous dry brushing all over the tops of my palettes, using a lot of paint and a dragging motion to replicate small scale wood grain. And there, easy breezy beautiful palettes. Next was the ammo crates. These I primed gray and then airbrushed with a spot of white in the middle of each one. This will give some easy contrast. And if I had a green ink, I would have used it now, but green wash will work just fine. I hosed my boxes down and while they were all still wet, I sprayed some watery military green on the sides of each crate. While the paint is wet, it should all blend together nicely. And on my barrels, I gave them a simple dusting of some red ink and some cyan ink. Now everything is painted, I pulled them off their handles and got them ready for the finishing touches. I don't have a gold paint I really like, so I put two drops of orange ink into my silver paint and used this on all of the eagles on the boxes. Then I took some silver paint and a large sponge brush and began sponging some silver all over my boxes and barrels. This will give them a nice battlefield beat up appearance and hide any sloppage from my speed painting airbrush. Alright, they're done being painted, so now it's time for the best part, assembly. <gasps> and what's this? Tacky glue? I didn't want to use super glue, as it doesn't have much surface area, and used in these quantities it still would have taken a long time to dry. This tacky glue will do wonders, and dries a little rubbery, so my parts may even survive some heavy handling or, god forbid, a drop. This was really fun. I just got to play decorator and put my components into nice fun combinations. Alright, four down. About... a hundred more to go. Ah, oh, god. I just lost way too many hours to fixing 3D printers. Could you believe that printing 24 hours, 7 days a week can lead to some wear and tear? This splooge can happen when you don't tighten everything down while the machine is hot, or from wear and tear. Although I could clean this up with a little heat, I don't have time to do it. Luckily I have replacement parts and new air ducts ready to make this baby purr. 
This was it, the final hours of the final day. It's gotta get done, but I don't know if it's possible. I am running out the clock. I always knew it would get to crunch time, but I was hoping it would be more Cocoa Puffs and less Mini Wheats. I was smashing out terrain like there was no tomorrow, but even at breakneck speeds, it seemed we may have overestimated our abilities. We got a lot done. Terrain is really big. It's simple to paint, but size matters, and the bigger the object, the longer it takes to paint. Designing isn't the problem, it's the darn printers. They can only go so fast. Even though I tapped into the archives for designs, printing just takes hours and hours and hours. We did it. We got terrain done. It maybe doesn't satisfy all our hopes and dreams, but it is mission accomplished. JKLOL! F*** you! We didn't sleep, we didn't eat, we spent 168 hours making and painting all this stuff. And it's done. I didn't think I could do it, but Jedi Master Yoda told me, do or do not, there is no try. So I just did it. I pushed and I pushed and it all got done. Painting is not exactly hard, but I was. I just hunkered down and did it. I can accomplish a lot and I didn't know I had it in me. It was a full load kind of week for me too. Some of these pieces really brought me back to my technical designer days. This modular decking is just like the stuff I worked on for the Super Bowl halftime show in 2020. Yes, this is real. I really worked on the Super Bowl. But look at all the different stuff you can make with it. You have legs, decking, and walls to make the platforms of your dreams. I really fell in love with these Imperial Guard buildings, and putting them up on foam hills brings me back to the good old days of handmade terrain. Although our 3D print stuff looks way better, there is a certain classiness to combining the two, and it wasn't too hard to make either. All these leaves you can see are from a company called Epic Basing. If you've gotten jazzed watching us build terrain, we have a few pieces of terrain available for free from our Patreon. A bunch of Necron terrain and a plasma generator that might just look familiar to you. You can go download those, print them out, and give them a try. We also have seven terrain packs available to download on our Patreon for the Ultra fans. There's a link in the description to see everything you get from joining. Get building.